oh, there was a time when Reanimator might have been the most feared deck in Legacy. It was certainly on the top five best decks list, right? And then just kind of dropped off. Well, when Gristlebrand first came out, I remember in the community, there's a lot of people saying, we need to ban Gristlebrand. This guy is too good. Reanimator is too good yeah. now. And I mean, like, history has showed us that, like, no, Reanimator wasn't too good. It's good. But it was beatable. It, it was good, especially when people were not prepared for it. Now people are prepared for it. But it it's like cyclical, right, where eventually people are like, oh, well, I don't have to fight Reanimator. I don't need as much Graveyard Hate or as many Caracuses, things of that nature. And then it's like, oh, well, people aren't doing that stuff. Maybe Reanimator's good again. Edward Warren lost playing for top eight yesterday with green-white, trying to avenge that and make top eight today. He's at four and one. Turn one, we see a Jataxian probe from Warren. And in response, Lowry's going to go ahead and hide <laughs> all the cards that matter. So Warren gets to see a hand of Echoing Truth, uh, Force of Will, and four lands. So the two business cards certainly hiding in Troy's hand. Yeah, Troy's almost deck. certainly. I mean, if, if I were Troy, I think the card that I would want on top of my library right now is another Brainstorm to get rid of that excess lands, or those excess lands. It's just like, Reanimator can function pretty well on two lands. Maybe you want a third one to help pay for days. Yeah. On the on the spectrum of combo decks and legacy, Reanimator is not on like it's not Belcher level fast, but it's not high tide level slow either. It's still like it's like a medium fast combo deck. Right, and to further hammer that point home, you see that Troy has two Lotus Petals in his main deck. He's not going hard on all four, right? But occasionally they help. So medium fast is a good way to put it. Yeah, I think the reason we don't see this deck as much is if you go back to Return to Ravnica, printings of cards like Deathrite Shaman and rest in peace are both like some of the strongest graveyard hate cards we have in legacy and at the same time like uh reanimator was already main decking some number of show and tells you see troy has two in the main and i just think a lot of your reanimator players said you know i don't want to try to dodge these rest in pieces anymore i'm just i'm just gonna play sneak and show right like, exactly like how good is the graveyard stuff if i have to play show and tell main deck why am i not just playing a show and tell deck right you see the draw for troy was an intuition And he's going to go ahead and play a fetch land here. Uh, Maybe not. Yeah, it, it was some, a show and tell. show and tell. Okay, yeah, yeah. A different two and a blue spell with an old card frame. <laughs> All right. Going back to Edward's side, he does have a Deathrite Shaman here. We'll see what he wants to go for. It's Ponder. There was not a land in the graveyard, so he couldn't make that Liliana that he may have wanted to get. Yeah, Troy Troy had a decision to make there. Like, you could fetch main phase to play around Stifle from Eddie, or you could just hold the land. You have a bunch of lands, so you don't really mind if you get Stifled, right? Ideally, you're building up to three to cast Show and Tell. Right. But you really don't want to give him an extra land for his Death Rage Shaman. And this is something that Edward's done with Bug Delver. He took it in more of, I was talking to him about it, he took it in more of a tempo direction rather than playing cards like him to Turok that you sometimes see or maybe Thought sees. He's on the four stifle package and playing like your taxi and probe, something that you sometimes see out of Bug Delver. Like to me, that's more indicative of a Rug Delver strategy. Yeah, and that's basically what this is, where it functions like a Rug Delver deck, except you have Death Rage Shaman instead of Nimble Mongoose and then black removal instead of red removal. So he's gonna ponder here. In response, Troy is going to Echoing Truth away the Death Rite Shaman. Yeah, that might give him the turn of Reprieve, right? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting play because he didn't want Edward finding a fetch land, cracking it, and then having extra mana with the Death Rite. So he took this opportunity to just bounce the Death Rite before it could make mana. And well, it, it could have floated a mana off of Troy's land. Okay. We'll see whether or not it did. I, I don't believe so. And he's going to play Graft Digger's Cage for the turn off his Wasteland. And that's a pretty spicy one to have in this matchup. Yeah, that's generally pretty good, especially after your opponent uses your Echoing Truth. But, I mean, you see Troy sitting on a couple copies of Show and Tell in his hand. Graft Digger's Cage is not that big of a deal right now for him. He's sideboarded around Graveyard Hate. He expected that. Yeah, so he has two Show and Tells now in hand. You'd said drew the second one that turn. He doesn't have a monster yet. And Edward, with plenty of graveyard hit, you see Nile Spellbomb also in his hand to attack the graveyard. He's going to go ahead and recast. Well, I was going to say recast Death Rage Shaman, but he's going to go a little more aggressive now. Doesn't have another land, so he'll play Delver of Secrets. 
Yeah, and I don't mind that. The clock's kind of ticking on, on Eddie to actually put together a real clock and put some pressure on Troy before he can piece together the, the combo that he needs. And I mean, and here's a difficult spot. Troy did get the monster he was looking for. He drew Elesh Norn for the turn. It's going to be pretty powerful if it works here. Fortunately for Edward, he's not dead to it. Elish Norn's great at killing creatures. She's not that great at winning the game. She takes a while, and Edward does have a Liliana in his hand. He's one man off from playing. Yeah, but. and Liliana appears to be the only card in his deck outside of something like Toxic Deluge that can really deal with this Elish Norn. Yeah, so we see both players bring a card to show and tell. Edward brings a Deathrite Shaman. Almost wishes he hadn't, because it's going to hit the bin along with Delver's Secrets. And now the 4-7 Praetor is in play for Lowry. Edward will have a good number of turns to try to draw that land, but until he does, he's going to be taking four. Remember, you actually cannot put a Liliana into play off Show and Tell because it was made, it was printed before Planeswalkers were around, so instead of saying people put a permanent into play, it lists, they put, it lists the kind of card types you can put into play, and right. Planeswalker is not on it. Yeah, the closest thing that ever happens to that is like the Planeswalker player puts in a land and is able to hard cast their Planeswalker and hopefully that's good. Yeah, as you see there, it says you may choose an artifact, creature, enchantment, or land. So basically they may choose a non-Planeswalker permanent and put yeah. it into play. It's funny because I think the intention was like in the design of the card was probably to put a tournament into play, but like at the time of the printing, you're like, yeah, like there's no functional difference in wording this and says put a permanent into play. Yeah. Um, and we do see that on a couple legacy cards. There's a Pernicious Deed is another one that just lists a bunch of things, but as a result, doesn't have kill Planeswalkers. Right. And we're going to go back to Troy's turn here. He's going to cast a Brainstorm. He does have that fetch land. He's going to get full value off this Brainstorm. Still has Force of Will and a blue card. Right, and that's pretty strong. As you said, you know, that Liliana in Edward's hand is one of his few ways to kill Elish Norn. And... Now, Force of Will is protecting the 4 7. Yeah, I mean, the other game you can play is can I get Tarmogoyf up to a 6 7? So then it, it gets shrunk down to a 4 5, and maybe you can block this Elish Norn and find some way to actually attack around it. Yeah, you'd force Trey to show and tell again, get right. something else into play. That works, but then, like, so you stabilize, but then how do you win? You know, he still seems, seems like, still seems like to win, you'd have to kill that Elish Norn. Uh, the game goes on for a long time. The bug player tries to find some way to either remove the Elish Norn or get enough Tarmogoyfs so that they can keep attacking. So they need like two to three Tarmogoyfs in play? Yeah, or just find a Liliana to actually kill the Elish Norn, while the reanimator player just tries to put another creature into play. It's a plan. It doesn't... That does, it's not a plan I'm thrilled about playing if, I, if I'm I've, the bug I've seen player. Elish Norn get brickwalled. Uh, generally, it was by something like Knight of the Reliquary, which can very easily be like a 10-10, you know? Yeah. And then actually eventually attack through it also. And clock is ticking as Troy casts a second show and tell here. Edward still hasn't found the land yet. And this one might be lights out. You see his shield, Iona Shield of Ameria has joined the crew for Troy. Yeah, if if that name's black, that, that very well could do it. Yeah, she'd hit the play as a 9-9 thanks to Elish Norn. It would lower the clock down to just a single turn after this resolves. And Edward does have the timer if you mentioned. So that's a plus. The, the minus is, of course, that, you know, Troy does have the Aeona. Something a little bit bigger than a Tarmogoyf. Yeah. He draws a card off of Nile Spellbomb. It's Stifle. That's going to be no help. And it looks like Show and Tell is going to resolve. And you have to... So Tarmogoyf will... Looks like he'll be able to survive. There's Artifact, Creature, Sorcery. No more lands. He, he got rid of those. It's gonna... So Goyf will survive. It won't be big enough to block Elishnorn. And it certainly won't be flying enough to block this Iona. Nor would it really want to be, I don't think. You're just throwing Tarmogoyf under the bus at that point, but... Gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. Yep, Iona has been set to black, so the Liliana in Edward's hand is uncastable. There's the land he was waiting for. That one is a turn too late, if not more. You see, Tarmogoyf. 
we're figuring out the size on it. You're going to have to subtract two. And I don't, I don't, I don't see what Troy. I don't see if Troy has a way to stop this nine nine from beating him up. So one of the things. I like about Reanimator is that the show and tell package is actually really good at fighting against graveyard hate. You see that uh, Eddie had a Deathrite Shaman early, a Graft Taker's Cage, a Nihil Spell Bomb, and all it took was a couple of show and tells. Yeah, Troy never used his graveyard at all this game. Right. So in that regard, you got your opponent to side in a bunch of cards that are really not that great against you. I mean, sure, he has to keep in some of the Entomb Reanimate type stuff, but. He had brainstorms to fix his hand and just find stuff that he actually needed. He did get Edward to cast a one mana artifact that doesn't do anything. Correct. So not only did you get him to put that in his deck, but also you got him to invest the time to cast it, uh, perhaps kept the hand based on the strength or the presumed strength of Graft Acre's Cage. Yeah, it goes ahead and looks at Iona here. Slight eyebrow raised there from Edward Warren, kind of looking at me like, oh, is that? And that's all she does, huh? Yeah, just, really? I can't play any <laughs> black play cards? Anything? That doesn't seem fair. Does that include these Lilianas? Oh, yeah. Now, oh, we see it. We know. Yep. If she, that was any other creature. Well, to be fair, if that was Gristlebrand, that still might not be very good. We do know he had a lot of turns where he was trying to hit that that third mana. If he had, he would have had the answer for Elish Norn. The Liliana would have already been in play, which would have been enough to have the Iona covered. It would have been a different story. Yeah, potentially. I mean, he would still have to get through Troy's Force of Will. Right. He does have two Lilianas, though. So yeah. the second one would get through. Yeah, given him enough time, he certainly had it. 